Greetings, everybody. This is going to be a Bible study on the transfiguration of Jesus and what was its significance or meaning. Let's turn your Bibles, your King James Bible, to Mark chapter 9, verse 1. And he, Jesus, and he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here, which shall not taste of death, till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. Now, what does that mean? Well, in Luke chapter 17, in verse 20, And when he, Jesus, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. But yet, in Mark 9, it said, with power. Well, what about that? Well, I believe the fulfillment of that was Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Now, that word wind comes the Greek word pneuma, and sometimes it's translated as wind, breath, uh, sometimes it's referred to as spirit, as in the Holy Spirit. So, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven, from heaven, that's the key word there, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. Now, I wasn't even going to make this part of the fire series. This is something else, but we'll get back to that. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now remember, uh, after this, uh, they were given not only the power to speak in other tongues, but, I mean, they were, you know, Peter, and uh, they were healing people, just like Christ did. So maybe that was the fulfillment of Mark 9, where it says, you know, chapter 1, Mark, Mark chapter 9, verse 1. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there shall be some of them that stand here, which shall not taste of death, till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. Well, the kingdom of God was within them, and then they had the Holy Spirit. So, obviously, in my opinion, this was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2. All right, let's go to Mark chapter 9, verse 1. Two. And after six days, why six days? Hmm. Well, six days, God created everything in six days. Adam was created on the sixth day. And then on the seventh day, he rested, the Sabbath. And uh, I hope you don't think God rested because he was tired. No, he was setting an example for us. All right, let's take a look. Uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now, some people say, will tell you that this creation was a time before Adam and Eve, 
like some other long period of time and then there was a war and it was destroyed, then God had to start over. Other people will say that God created the souls of all the men and women. Um, others will say these are pre-Adamic beings. Uh, I don't know. Take your pick. Personally, I kind of believe this is God creating the souls, but I don't know. You know, sometimes the Bible just doesn't give you enough information to make a definite thing uh, to understand it completely. So, verse 28. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, for you it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to every thing that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made. Behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Now, if God had created a, something prior to this and had been corrupted and destroyed like a war or something, uh, how could it be very good? I don't know. But in verse 28, it says, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth. Well, you can't... To plenish something means to start, you know, plant something or do something. Uh, to replenish means to do it again. So there's a little bit of... You could go either way with this. Some people think there was a, a war prior to this. I don't know. But it's not that big of a deal in my opinion. It's just something I'm bringing up just in case you hear it. Uh, what can I tell you? And there's a verse, I believe, a scripture in Jeremiah that kind of points to a destruction of things before Adam and Eve how it said something about the earth had be, had become null and uh, void. Now, 6 is an, uh, in Revelation 13, 18. Here is wisdom. Let he that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is 600, three score, and six. Uh, that would make sense if man was created on the sixth day. So... All right, so let's go back to Mark chapter 9, verse 2. And after six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John. So he didn't take everybody. He just took Peter, James, and John and leadeth them up into an high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. Now, what's a figure? Well, that's your what you look like. And what does trans means? It means a cross. Not a cross like a wooden thing that Jesus was crucified on, but like um, we went across the water on a boat. That sort of thing. Webster's 1828 Dictionary says transfigured is a passive participle, and it means changed in form. So, I wanted to give you the definition there. All right, so, Jesus was transfigured before them. He was changed. His form was changed. Verse 3, and his raiment, his clothing, became shining shining like the sun, people, exceeding white as snow. Now, the uh, it's funny when you 
show the black Hebrews uh, that says that Jesus was white or something, they'll say, well, yeah, that means purity. Well, if white means purity, uh, what does black mean? That's a good question to ask them. I mean, I, I've got nothing against anybody for their, I hate nobody for their skin color. But, uh, you know, when they call us Esau and uh, we're going to be doomed and this and that and the other and, you know, pfft. yeah, what can I tell you? And his, Jesus's, and his raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow, so as no fuller fuller on earth can white them. What's a fuller? Well, that's somebody that works with uh, clothing. So, you know, <laughs> you're talking nobody on earth could make a, a, a piece of clothing as white and shining as he was. Now, keep that in mind. Verse 4, And there appeared unto them Elias, which is the Greek rendering of Elijah, with Moses. And there appeared unto them Elias with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, now that word master is sometimes a, uh, it's rabbi. Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias, or Elijah. For he wist not what to say, for they were sore afraid. Yeah, I'd be afraid too. I mean, this guy's shining like the sun. I'd be, I'd probably be afraid too. Verse 7. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son. Hear him. And suddenly when they looked round about, they saw no man anymore, save Jesus only, with themselves. Now, what is the meaning of Moses appearing and Elias or Elijah appearing? What's the, what's the meaning of that? Why is he there with them? All right, well, let's take a look. Let's go to Exodus chapter 34. Verse 27. Exodus 34 and 27. And the Lord said unto Moses. Now remember, Moses was the deliverer uh, that God, God used Moses as a deliverer to bring the children of Israel out of Israel. Egypt, okay? Now they're in the wilderness. God's trying, God took them out of Egypt. Now he's trying to take Egypt out of Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write thou these words, for after the tenor of these words, I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. Didn't Jesus fast for 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness? Yes, he did. He did neither eat bread nor drink water, and he wrote upon the tab tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. See, Moses was the lawgiver. Well, God was a lawgiver, but he gave it to Moses to give to the children of Israel. He was sort of like their inter intermediary. And think about it. That's what Christ is with us to God the Father. He's our intermediary. You don't need a Catholic priest. You don't need a rabbi. No. That's what we have Christ for. So, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of symbolism, a lot of similarities, types, shadows, all right, so Moses gave them the law, the Ten Commandments. Commandments, not suggestions. And let me tell you something, people. 
A law with no penalty is a suggestion. That's why when you run a red light, you get a ticket, a big ticket. It's a law, not a suggestion. Verse 29, And it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mount that Moses wist not, that the skin of his face shone while they talked with him. This guy was up on the mountain with the Lord God Almighty, and his face is shining bright like the sun, I guess. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh him. Oh, yeah. You know, this guy comes down from the mountain talking with the Lord, and his, his face is like the sun. You're like, whoa, dude, what's up with this? I ain't never seen nothing like that before. Uh, that's the Bob translation. And Moses called unto them and Aaron, and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him, and Moses talked with them. And afterward, all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. See, Moses gave them the law. Verse 33. Until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out, and he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone, and Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him. So, check it out. Jesus was shining bright. Moses was shining bright at one time, back in the past. So, now, who appeared to Jesus? Elijah the prophet and Moses the lawgiver. So, this represents the two people that appeared to Jesus represent the law and the prophets. Where do we read about the law and the prophets? All right, let's go to Matthew, uh, let's see, I think it's 20, 22. All right, let's go to Matthew 22. Now, the uh, Sadducees had, they were, um, they only believed in the books of Moses. The books of Moses, what they call the Torah, some people, is known as Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. The Sadducees accepted that as their canon of Scripture. Those were the only five books of the Bible that they accepted. They didn't accept the Psalms. They didn't accept the prophets. Uh, they didn't believe the book of Joshua. Uh, none of that. They didn't believe in the minor prophets, the major prophets, no. They only believed in the books of Moses. And they presented under Jesus a question that, uh, well, let's take, let's take a look. Verse 23. The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him, now, if there's no resurrection and you die and that's it, I mean, what good is your religion? I mean, uh, the resurrection, the, the Bible is, I mean, that's one of the most important doctrines in the Bible, especially the resurrection of Christ. And the Sadducees didn't believe in a resurrection. So what? You die, that's it? There's nothing? Big deal. Why even bother being believing in God? Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. And that's in the Bible somewhere. I can look it up, but you get the general idea. The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him, saying, Master, Moses said if a man die having no children, 
His brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Seed as in children, right? Now there were with us seven brethren, and the first, when he had married a wife, deceased, and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. No issue means no children. Likewise the second also, and the third unto the seventh. And last of all, the woman died also. Now they're trying to trick Jesus. And they say, verse 28, Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err. E-R-R. -R. That's where we get the word error. You guys are wrong. Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. And people, let me tell you, not all the angels are in heaven. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Now this verse, one verse by itself, if people try to tell you soul sleep, uh, that people when they die, they don't come back to life until their soul spirit doesn't come back to life until the resurrection. Well, they're contradicting Jesus right here. Jesus said, God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. So obviously, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob may not have a physical body that they had before, but their soul and spirit has to exist. Otherwise, Jesus is a liar. And I've heard Jehovah's Witnesses are famous for that little soul sleep. There's a lot of people that believe it. And when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, uh, he was a doctor of the law, the Bible law, not what we call a lawyer today. Sadly, Harvard, Yale, Princeton, I think Princeton, Harvard and Yale, I know for sure, uh, they were all started as Bible colleges. Now they're anything but well, they teach classes, Harvard teaches classes in anal sex, so I guess they teach anything but, uh, forgive my crudeness, but uh, I mean, really? A Bible college now teaches classes in anal sex, really? But uh, one day Christ will return and he'll deal with them, and I hope he gives me a flaming sword, because I know what to do with it. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, so the, here, here it is the Sadducees, another uh, denomination of the Jews, is trying to trick him up. Verse 36, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto, them, unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And hopefully you don't live next door to a bunch of Satanists, okay? I'd move, but that's just my opinion. Verse 40. Okay, so love the Lord, love thy neighbor. Verse 40. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So what did Moses represent? The prophets. What did Elias, Elijah represent? The prophets. Now, I, do, I did a, um, an hour and 45 minute Bible study on Elijah. And Elijah is going to come back. He's one of the only two people that never died in the Bible that I'm aware of. Matter of fact, I had to do a Bible study on a character in the Bible 
when I was in Bible college, and I picked Elijah. Not to take anything away from Christ, obviously, but uh, Elijah was one of my favorite characters. He, he, just, he's, he had such an interesting life. But 2 Kings chapter 2, check this out. Verse 1. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went from Elisha, from Gilgal. So Elisha was the student of Elijah. He was going to carry on for Elijah. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel, and if you don't know it, Bethel means house of God. Beth means house, and El means, uh, it's a reference to God. So it means house of God. And the sons of the prophet that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and, un, and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. Uh, the Bob translation is, Yeah, yeah, I know. Keep quiet. Shut up. But that's the Bob translation. So, Verse 4, And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth and as my soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. Now that's a faithful friend there. You know, he tells you, Ah, oh, stay here. Nope, I'm going with you. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee, here, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth and as my soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And the two went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophet went and stood to view afar off, and the two stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle. Evidently, it was some kind of a piece of clothing that prophets would wear. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters. And they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. How's that? He goes up to the river, you know, hits the water, and it splits, divides, and they walk over dry ground. How's that? Verse 9, And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Okay, here's the punchline. Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. So Elijah is getting ready to be taken away. And he asked his student, Elisha, all right, uh, ask, what do you want me to do for you? Ask, what can I do for you? And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. You know, Elijah was probably one of the greatest prophets in the Bible. And he says, I don't even I I don't want just just what you've got. I want double. I mean, <laughs> you know? Ooh. Verse 10, and he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. So, if, if Elisha sees Elijah going up in the chariot, or going away, his wish for double portion is going to be granted. But if he doesn't see it, his wish is not going to be granted. Thou hast asked a hard thing. Oh, yeah. Verse 11. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire. I guess I should make this part of the uh, fire series, huh? 
a chariot of God of fire, right? There appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Elijah is one of the only people that never died. And he's coming back one day, people. And Elisha saw it. So at his, his request for the double portion, yeah, dog, he's got it. And Elijah saw it and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. And he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. Wow. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and he smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had also smitten the waters, they parted hither and did thither. And Elisha went over. And when the sons of the prophets which were to view at Jericho saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. Wow. How's that, huh? You know, there's a verse in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16 where we, we are told, Let us come boldly, boldly, unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And that's what Elisha did. He, he's, he was bold. He says, I want a double. I, want what, I don't want just what you got. I want double. And he was given it. Oh, and by the way, um, there was, well, you should read the stories about Elisha. He, uh, there was a guy, when Elisha was dead and buried and his bones were in a grave, there were some people that took a dead man and they put him in the same hole and his dead body touched the bones of Elisha and he came back to life. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How's that for uh, the power of God, huh? Just his bones brought back the, light, the, the dead to life, a resurrection. All right, let's read the uh, other account in Matthew chapter 17, verse 1. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun. So Christ's face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him, the law and the prophet. Then, uh, let's see. That's Bob's, yeah. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must come first? Then Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly must, come, must first come and restore 
all things. But I say unto you, that Elias is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. See, John the Baptist, the Pharisees asked John the Baptist if he was Elijah. And he said, no. And look, I, I totally believe John knew who he was. So he said no. But here it is, Jesus is telling them, John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah. He was the voice crying in the wilderness. In Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 3, The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. All right, let's go to Mark chapter 1, verse 1. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I will send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. We just read that in Isaiah. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism for repentance for the remission of sins. Now, there's a lot of people running around tell you that repentance is only, uh, we're only supposed to repent of our lack of faith. But, but here it is, John's baptizing in the wilderness, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins not lack of faith or to change your mind from no faith to having faith. He's talking about repentance for the remission of sins. Verse 5, And there went out unto him all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem, and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins, not their unbelief, confessing their sins. And John was clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of a skin about his loins. And he did eat locusts and wild honey and preach, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I have indeed baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Didn't we read that in Acts chapter 2? Yeah. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. And straightway coming out of the water, he saw the heavens opened and the Spirit, the Spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased." And immediately the Spirit driveth him into the wilderness, and he was there in the wilderness forty days. Wasn't Moses in the wilderness forty days? Didn't we just read that not too long ago? Yeah. And he was there in the wilderness forty days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered unto him. Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Now there's some people will tell you that Jesus was just a mere man. Don't you believe it? 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Who was manifested in the flesh? God. God was manifest in the flesh. Justified in the spirit. 
seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Who was manifest in the flesh? God. And people will say, well, you know, God, Jesus was praying to the Father. Was God praying to God? Well, you got to understand something. God was clothed with human flesh. And as an example for us, and him being in the flesh, he was praying to the Father. That's why it says, great is the mystery of godliness. It's a mystery. See, New Agers believe that man can become, ascend to become God. But they'll deny that God could descend to become man. Does that make sense? Man can become God, but God can't become a man? Really? In 1 John 4 and chapter 4, verse 9, In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. John 3.16, everybody should know this one. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then John 3.18, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Uh, in Matthew 3.11, John the Baptist said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Did you know that we're going to be baptized with fire? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's, that's another study. Now, here's a resurrection message. Tomorrow, the... Um, most of the world that calls themselves Christians is going to celebrate what they call Easter, which they do in what they say is the resurrection. Um, I disagree, but hey, who am I? But uh, John chapter 19, verse 32. Now, this is the crucifixion, people. Then came the soldiers and brake the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they brake not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bare record and his record is true and he knoweth that he saith true that ye might believe. Now, Jesus in the flesh, when he was killed, what came out? Blood and water. Blood and water. All right, let's go to John chapter 20. This is uh, Jesus' uh, body was dead. He's been buried, and he's in the sepulcher. John 20, verse 11. But Mary stood without at the sepulcher, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher and seeth two angels in white, sitting the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, 
because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. Laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not, and knew not, that it was Jesus. So was Jesus' appearance different? Or was she just not paying attention? I don't know. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. See, Rabbi means Master. When Jesus said to call no man Rabbi, that's what they're talking about, people. Of course, they'll tell you it means teacher. Well, yeah, you should learn. Your, ra your, your master should be your teacher, but, you know. And Rabboni is uh, the Greek rendering of rabbi. So, she turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, master. Jesus saith unto her, listen carefully, touch me not. Don't touch me. Don't hug me. You know, don't touch me. That's the Bob translation. Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. And people will say, well, you know, Jesus has a God. Okay, well, God was manifested in the flesh. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. So, then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, well, this is Sunday, right? When the doors were shut, when the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, not the Romans, the doors were shut when the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. You better watch out, people. There's going to be a day when the Bible's going to be called anti-Semitic and hate and be banned. Mark my words. When the doors were shut, when the disciples were ascended for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said, saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, the wind, the pneuma, the spirit. He breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. In other words, if you forgive somebody of their sins, they're forgiven. And if you don't, they're, they're, they're going to die in their sins. Verse 24. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said, uh, said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the door being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Listen, reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach 
hither thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless, but believing. You see, there was a time he told Mary, don't touch me. But now he's telling them, oh, now you can put your finger into my hands and put your, your hand into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to them, My Lord, my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. And I don't, I don't remember reading Yeshua HaMashiach in there anywhere. Nope. It says Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. People, how's that for an Easter resurrection message? I, I don't do Easter, but, you know, resurrection message. Listen, um, you notice when Christ was on earth, he was flesh and blood. Now he's flesh and bone. All right, let's read Luke 24, and we'll close this out. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, there they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereafter, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed, down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. And they returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and other women that were with them which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales. And they believed them not. Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulcher and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about threescore furlongs. And they talked together all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as you walk and are sad? And the, and the one of them said, whose name was Cleophas, answering, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? And has not known the things which are to uh, come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? <laughs> Jesus likes to play along here, right? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests, not the Catholic priests, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he 
which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came, saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. Then he, Jesus, then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village, whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and brake and gave to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose up in the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together, and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and hath appeared to Simon. Simon Peter, by the way. And they told what things were done in the way, and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. And as they thus spoke, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And they were terrified and affrighted, and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones. Flesh and bones, as ye, have, uh, as ye see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet, and while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and of an honeycomb, and he took it and did eat before them. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all these things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses, written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms, concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And he said unto, said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, among all nations beginning at Jerusalem, and ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. And we read that in Acts chapter 2. When the Holy Spirit came upon them as cloven tongues, that's the fulfillment of that. Okay, verse 50. And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. Amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. This is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. All blessing, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings and glory to him. In Jesus' name. Amen.